Hi, I'm Peter Sigwell and welcome to Masterclass Junior. We are ready to cook something delicious for dinner. I've got both my little helpers today, so anything could happen. So we're going to make a really lovely phyllo pie. And in that pie, we've got some really nice things. We've got some red onion, pepper, red pepper, a sweet red pepper we're putting in ours, tomatoes, we've got a few spices, no chilli. So it's not hot, it's just fragrant. And we're going to use some feta cheese and some couscous. So in terms of a recipe, it's quite a simple, quite a simple recipe, but you can make it your own. If you don't like feta and you prefer halloumi, you can kind of chuck that in and, you know, different vegetables, good way to use up. It's quite a nice way of making like a big, more couscous, because you can have it tomorrow for salad, things like a bit of leftovers, all that sort of stuff. So the kettle is boiling um, and we're going to get started. So, right. Uh, no, not yet. Couscous first. You want to get the scales on there. Thomas, are you going to pour in the couscous for me? We need 100 grams, okay? So, pop that on there and then grab a bowl. Not that pan yet. Right, press the on-off button and that will zero it. Right, 100 grams, please, young man. Whoa. Ah. It's all right. That, that'll be fine, don't worry. Little bit over is okay, don't worry about it. All right, right, let's lift that off. Right, very important, couscous airtight container because it will absorb any moisture, so there we go. Right, are we all right, Emily? She's just sort of running around. Right, Poppy, kettle. So can we see into this bowl because it's quite important what we're doing? Yeah, we'll be able to, just tip it towards Yeah, do you want me to cut in? Right, okay, are you going to pour in or am I? I will. You pour in, I'll say when. So you want about a centimetre above the level of couscous, and then that's pretty much it. So keep going, stop. Let's just have a look. Right. Is that enough? That is enough. Can you see that, Emily, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Boiling water, just put it to one side and get rid, okay? Right. So, who wants to chop the onion today? Poppy. Love a good onion, don't you, Pops? I will. I Are you gonna chop the onion? I'll do half. All right. You do half, I'll do half. Show them how you do it. Nice little pieces, yeah? So first of all, it's peeled. Don't leave it on there. No. And cut into there for me, Emily. And let me just show you. Yeah, can you see that all right? Do you see how the core of the onion is on? And it's that bit there. That holds the onion together and stops it falling apart when you cut it. Right, Pops, show them how it's done. Take your time. Right, a little bit further. Do you remember, you cut in and then away, like that. But not all the way through. Yeah, not all the way through there. Uh, yeah, there you go. So nice and small cuts. For me, this job, like, I get Poppy to do this every time we broadcast because she gets better and better and she gets more and more confident, more and more familiar, and, and it just, confidence breeds sort of confidence in the kitchen. Kids or adults, it doesn't matter keep doing those jobs, they get more familiar, they get easier, and then cooking's a blast, it's so just easy. Like that, yeah, and it's just nice and gentle, in like that, there. Are, you, are we gonna get you to do the next one? Mm. Stop, that's it, pull the knife out, and now cut down, nice and gentle, try and straighten your knife, like that, yeah? Why don't you do just the cuts in and then I'll do the chopping, yeah? Mm -hmm. Right, let's get the pan on while we're waiting. If anyone has any questions about what we're doing, please fire them into Facebook and Emily's kind of keeping one eye on the Facebook page at the same time. Um, and we will answer them if we can um, while we're cooking. Um, if not, later on I'll have a look at the feed um, and if there's any questions there that need answering, I will answer them. But please fire them in. Emily's always got a few for me. Right, that's good. Thomas, are we ready? Okay, you wanna have a go? Oh dear, we've got a crier. Okay, so what we do is, can you see this all right, Emily? Yeah. So we're gonna cut in, but we don't, and then we pull it towards, okay? So you cut in, down, and out. In, down, out, yeah? Can you do that, can you do one of those? So hold the onion with your hand like that. That's it, okay? In, down, and out. Do one more for me. Not that far in. 
He's all right there. He won't cry because he doesn't want to be as bad as his sister. <laughs> he wants to beat his, his sister, doesn't he? Right, one more, and then I'll do the rest. Good, well done, that was brilliant. Really good. Do you want to have another go? Are you all right? I will. You're going to finish it? Yeah. All right, you finish it. Okay, so we've got our red onion there, and then we're going to cut the red pepper. Now, we've got a sweet red pepper, uh, which is kind of the long Mediterranean ones. They're just a little bit sweeter. I like these ones more than I like the other ones, but you can use any one that you've got in the fridge. It's absolutely fine. Any questions yet, Emily? Um, somebody's asked, what can, we, what can you use instead of couscous? Uh, you can use bulgur wheat, you can use quinoa, you can use rice that's left over in the uh, fridge if you want. Just make sure it's really, really hot. It's important. And we've got uh, another question as well. Do you need to cover the couscous while it's soaking? No, water? not at all. Just leave it to do its thing. Let me, let me show you. Cut into there, Emily, look. It's done its thing. It's absorbing. The key to couscous being lovely and light and fluffy is don't mess about with it, don't touch it. Once you've put the boiling water in, leave it. And it will, if you start stirring it and messing about with it, it won't be light and fluffy, it'll be kind of stodgy. Right, are you tired, son? It's been a hard day, hasn't it, with homeschooling? Homeschooling today, what have we done? Uh, it's been a digital free screen day today for school. I like that idea. We've done den building. We've done, what else have we done? A little bit of oil in the pan there, by the we way. We had to touch every wall in the house. Yeah, so he had to touch every wall in the house and time himself, and he did it three times to see if he could get faster. He's written a letter to his great-grandma and granddad and drawn them uh, a drawing, and we've put that in a an envelope, haven't we? Yeah. And then we ran out of steam, really, didn't we? Yeah. And then he went and played Minecraft, so we lost him. Right, onions in. So, hot pan. Okay, right, we're going to do the pepper next, kids. Right, okay. Give your pan a little shake and it just means that the onions flatten out to one level. So if you have a big pile of onions like that, it won't work. The bottom will be cooked, the top will be raw. Give them a little shake, they all level out into a nice even heat. And then we're going to do a little bit of salt on there please, Mr T-Boy. Is that a hot pepper? No, it is a sweet pepper. So it's not got any heat in it at all. It is a sweet Mediterranean pepper. Go on, a little bit of salt, that draws the water out of the onions and it cooks them nicer. Because the water comes out, hits the bottom of the pan, evaporates and you end up with a lovely sweet onion. That'll do, son. You want to cut that? Yeah. Right, so cut the top off. Okay, and then just take the seeds out because we don't like those. They're bitter. Bleh. Always important to kind of remove the seeds of any pepper and remove the pith, the white bit. It's hard to get all no, no. What do you want? Do that. Uh, that's yeah. That would be what you call a hack. <laughs> What's a hack? Well, that's a very good question, Thomas. What is a hack, Poppy? A hack or a hack? Right. Okay, let's quickly... Okay. Right, so what I want you to do is, if I do a little bit, and then you do a bit. Wow. Yeah? Okay, just like little things. Little slices. When you're slicing, curl your fingers up, so that if you slip, you don't cut the end of your finger off. Okay. All right, you do it that way because you're like right-handed. You hey? Like you do. I have cut my finger a few times. Right, Thomas Sidwell, can you take these tomatoes off the vine for me? So just pick them off the vine. Now, with our couscous, we're going to flavour it up, okay? So I've got cumin here. So I'm going to sprinkle the cumin in so it's a fragrant spice. It's not a hot spice at all. And then I've got some dried mint to go in as well. You could use fresh mint. I have got some fresh mint as well. Um, dried mint's really strong and intense, so you don't want to use a lot. Fresh mint is very light and very fragrant, so you use more. So if you're using dried, like teaspoon of it. If you're using fresh mint, good handfuls, delicious. Yeah, chop that up. And then all those peppers can go into there. And then, Thomas, are you going to slice these tomatoes in half for me? Right, you go round behind, Thomas, with your peppers. That's it, switch. Right, Thomas, what I want you to do. So if you're going to get kids to cut tomatoes, and I, I'm a big believer in like letting them use a knife, but under supervision, and you kind of teach them how to do it. So do you see that little dot there? Yeah. Yeah? So you put your finger on the dot and the thumb on its bottom. Yeah? yeah. Like that. 
You put it like that, and then you just push the knife like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it opens. So I'm going to do a couple, but I want you to have a go. Yeah. Right, can you put a nice little drizzle of olive oil in there, Poppy? Just because it smells, this one, it just smells like it's dry frying now. And when you're cooking, you kind of get to know what's going on in and around your kitchen. It's not always about what you can see. So, finger on the top, thumb on the bottom, like that, yeah? Can you see that all right, Emily? Yes. Exactly. Yeah, and then I do that. You want that way? Yeah. Okay, and then you put the knife through and down, like that. Can you see that all right? And that's a nice, safer way to cut. So you hold it with your left hand. So finger on the dot, thumb on the bottom. Put it down like that, and then hold the knife like that. Fingers up, out of the way. That's it. Push, and then pull. Yeah? Is it cut in half? Mm-hmm. Boom. There you go. It's all about the teacher. Oh, well done, son. All right, fingers up in the air. Push gently, and then pull. Done it? Boom. Right, concentrate, you're doing well. Well done, right. Oops. You've turned it off, Poppy. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, okay, so, right, here we go. Let me just check the oven, because I've got, here's one I made earlier. Any more questions, Emily? Uh, Your questions or, list, or viewers? I don't uh, mind. Fingers up. Okay, so we're using red onion and red pepper. You could use a courgette. I always put an onion in. Whether it's red or whether it's white or whether it's spring onions um, you could use. That's really good, Thomas. Nice and gentle. Good lad. Last one. Let's keep all those fingers. Same. Right. Now let's put your knife down. Let's check. Let's count them. Ten. We're all right. We're good. He's got all his fingers. Right. Tomatoes in, like so. Look how long. Hey? Right, fresh mints now. So, sorry, yeah, Emily. Fresh mint, I'm going to add a bit of fresh mint as well because we've got some in the garden. Roll it up and then just chop it nice and fine. You could use a bit of spinach as well if you wanted to. You could use coriander. You could use basil and go cut more Italian if you wanted to. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, let's give that a little shake. A little stir. Was that too much oil? No, it's perfect. Thank you. Okay, so other vegetables. Uh, courgette, grate it in. Roast it. If you've got any roast vegetables left in the fridge, you could put those in. Fresh tomatoes. You could put roasted butternut squash in there. You could put other peppers in there. Aubergine, roasted. You kind of need to cook them off because because we're using phyllo pastry, it doesn't take long to cook. Really super thin pastry. So, right, what we're going to do is get our lemon. Can you cut a lemon in half? Uh, yeah, I guess. All right, you want to do the lemon, and you can do a squeeze, yeah? Yeah. Let's get rid of these pips. Nice and steady. Yeah. Right, okay, so. Done. Squeeze the lemon juice into the couscous, and I'll show you, the couscous has absorbed all the moisture, okay? Wow. Give it a really good squeeze, don't? Yeah, that's I'll it. Squeeze well. Squeeze it like this. Squeeze it down, Poppy, so it's facing the couscous, not you. Yeah? yeah? All right? Um, you could add olives into there. You could add... What else could you add? You could add... Ooh, sweet potato, pumpkin, squashes, all that sort of stuff. Courgettes, mushrooms, any veggies, really, that you wanted. Um, you could do, like, feta and pea and mint would be really good. That would work. Okay, so you can do all sorts. You can also, if you've got some shredded up chicken and you want to put that in and just get loads of flavour in there, you can do it as spicy as you like or as smooth and mellow as you like. Right, okay, that's it. That'll do. Thank you. Right, so let's get this chopping board out of the way for a second. Okay, I want to show... Right, can you see the couscous there, Emily? Look how fluffy it is. Can you see that? That's just by leaving it and not touching it. Right, okay, so let's have those. You switch the hob off with that button with the circle. Oh. Get those into there. Some roast lamb would be delicious. Leftover roast lamb 
in here would be nice. Um, yeah. Okay. Right, let's put that to one side. Mm? Yeah, give it a mix, please. And then I've got feta cheese. Now, feta cheese works really well in this. Okay, but you could use halloumi. You could use mozzarella if you want. Um, you can kind of do all sorts, really. If you, I quite like the salty sort of tang of the cheese that works really well. It doesn't kind of melt to nothing. It sort of stays in little pieces throughout the couscous. You can also add dried fruit into this. You could add apricots, you could add prunes into this, you could add walnuts, seeds, all sorts of bits and bobs. Right, who's going to put that? Thomas, you're going to put that into there and then wash your hands. With my hands? Yeah, use your hands and then wash them afterwards. I know, I give you all the best jobs, don't I? Come on. Come on. Oh, I know. I'll do it then. Baby. Right, so in with the couscous. No, because it's already in the bottom. Yeah, that's handy, isn't it? Right, don't overmix it now. The key, once you put the feta in there, is to not overmix it because otherwise it'll all blend up into the same thing. So, Thomas, are you going to open the phyllo pastry for me? Okay. You can't do everything. You've got to let your brother do something. All right? He's got to earn his key. Well, um, right. Um. Okay. Any more questions, Emily? Go on. Instead of phyllo pastry, so phyllo is like super thin Greek pastry, like wafer thin. And the idea is that you have lots of layers and it goes nice and crispy. You could use puff pastry. Um, you could use short crust if you like. You just have to watch the moisture levels inside your filling. Um, and you can also use pancakes as well if you didn't have pastry. <laughs> Would you like me to cut it open? No, I can do it. I don't think you can. There. So you don't, you need to be quite quick with phyllo because it will dry out quite quickly. So take the whole thing out and then we're going to show you how we're going to make a long pastry pie. So unroll it, Thomas. Take that, thank you. Yeah, move over and then let me in here for a pastry brush. Right, okay, so in this packet here, is that all right, Emily? You know what she's like? Very she thin. likes. I know, super thin. Okay, look, can you see? If you can see through it, it's kind of that's how thin it wants to be. Yeah? <coughs> yeah, I know. Right, so are we cut into the board at the minute? I've got to brush it. Okay. You having a little camera trouble, Emily? No? Everything's fine? She's all fine. Are we good? Right, so I've got some melted butter. Okay, so if I just show you, I want that painting there. Just a few, I'll just do the first one just to sort of show you. Okay. All right, so there you go. All that butter's doing is just helping it stick. But it also means it goes nice and crispy. So I'm going to lay, now I wrote this the other day, the recipe, and, and I thought it made complete sense when I wrote it. Emily thought it was absolute gobbledygook. But hopefully, between seeing this now and reading it, you'll understand what I mean. So you lay the pastry from the centre to create a longer piece like that. So it's like 50% covered, yeah? So what you've got is two sheets, one and a half times the length. Does that make sense? Right, Tom, you're going to brush that on there for me a bit. Uh, yeah. Bit of butter, please. You get a sheet, and I want to, listen, I want you to lay it from there to there. From okay. To like to so quite quickly, Tom, just little brushes. It doesn't need to be perfectly painted. I'm going to turn that off because it's ready. Um, you can actually do sweet versions of this as well, which is really cool. I've seen like roasted plums and a little bit of leftover rice pudding kind of all mixed together with roasted fruit. And you can do the same thing. It's a little bit like a strudel. Yep, on there. And then Thomas is going to paint over the top on this there, and that will stick that and that piece together. Then we've got to do yeah, that one. that's it. There. Yeah, so we're just building the layers of pastry so that it's strong enough to hold the filling, but also nice and crispy. Now, if you haven't got butter or you don't use butter in the house, use olive oil, and you'll get a, you'll get a slightly different colour, but you will still get that lovely nice crispness to it. 
But don't, top tip, don't ever try and make phyllo pastry. It's really hard, it's so thin. Buy it, it's really easy to, to get hold of. Okay. We're good, we're looking good. Yeah. Do you wanna take a yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna season this up a little bit. So, not a lot, because the feta is slightly salty, so you really don't need any salt in there. And a little bit of pepper, we've got lemon juice, got olive oil, got fresh mint in there. And we've also got plenty. So if you do decide to make more filling, it'll be an amazing salad tomorrow for your working lunch. Any more questions, Emily? I think people are busy cooking. Are they? Have we got some cookers today? Good. What I love is once we've finished cooking, we then switch all the cameras off, we take it all down, and then we go next door and we eat, and Facebook starts popping up with pictures of what other people have made. And it is really nice that, that kind of I get to show you know, the kids other people have made. Like the other day with the gnocchi, there was quite a few people made fresh gnocchi. A couple of them tried it with tomato sauce, which is cool. I mean, it doesn't matter as long as people... We thoroughly enjoyed last week's gnocchi. It was amazing. So much nicer than supermarket, but... That's the last one. Really good. We got on the last one. Brilliant. So what we've ended up with is like multiple layers, but it's now 50% longer, which is what I wanted it to do. Get it, Emily? Makes sense? Yeah. She's, no, she's not quite right. bought in on this recipe. I'm a visual learner. <laughs> You're a special learner, aren't you? You're like, we all are in this office. Right. Okay. We're done now. I, what, all I need is for the ends to be painted. So I need you to go all the way around like that, Thomas. Okay? I want to do one. All right, well, you do up to there. You do your end, swap, and, and I'll do the filling. And then we'll fold it up together. Okay. Well, all right. Am I having that? Uh, yep. Maybe. We'll see. Okay. Do you fancy it? Um, Can you give it a whirl? No. I bet you try it. You've been really good at trying food recently. Really good. Super good, in fact. Can this be frozen, please? Uh, it can be frozen, um, as long as everything's nice and tightly packed and wrapped up. Um, but yeah, it can be. Yeah, there's no reason why it couldn't be. Hey, that was nice, Pat. It's a good way of using up leftovers, I'll be honest. You know, like you can use up antipasties, olives, some nice tomatoes. Are we good? Right, then we're going to start filling it and then we're going to have to fold it, Pops, in a minute. Okay. So we're going to fold it up. Yeah, can you just move the butter out of Emily's way? There we go. Right, can you finish? Stop exactly there, Poppy. If I put that there. Exactly. Exactly. There. It's a listening exercise. This is my angle. You need to get the oven tray from over there and the sesame seeds. Now, on the recipe, I haven't put sesame seeds to sprinkle on it, but when Emily took the photograph, she sprinkled sesame seeds on it. So we're gonna put them on, okay? It's an option. You don't have to put them on. You could put something else. You can, what's really nice is coriander and cumin seeds, but kids don't really like those too much. Um, so you can kind of dust it with lots of different things just to make it look nice. So there's a bit of a gap there, Pops, to fill that. So just want it evenly spread out. Um, but like, like I said before, you could use couscous, you're using couscous, you could use bulgur wheat, um, you can use quinoa, um, they'll work really, any grain really that you would soak. You can also use rice, wild rice uh, would be nice with this. You could use long grain rice. I wouldn't use medium grain rice, that'd be a bit starchy and a bit stodgy uh, for this recipe. Uh, you can use brown rice as well. And then obviously you can kind of, this bit, kind of make it how you like, put what you like in it. You could put Indian spices in there, you could put Moroccan spices in there, you could do all sorts, Italian pestos, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Walnuts in there, perfect, pop that over there. So now, Emily, we're gonna fold this up, so you'll probably wanna crop in on this, and then we're gonna brush it with some butter and sprinkle it. So, we're gonna fold that end into there. Fold this in. Yeah, and I want to make sure that it fits, okay? So we're just going to do it a little bit more to there, all right? So a little bit further over. There, that'll fit. Yes, no problem. Right, butter, Thomas. Um, which? Right. Brush on there and on that bit there. And this butter will help it stick, okay? 
and then on there, and on there. Okay, baby. Alright? And on there. Okay, so. Right, tomboy, come here. I'll get the middle, you get that end. You come around this side and follow me. So we're going to roll it over like that. All right? And are you ready to turn? Three, two. Two, one, go. There we go. See, you see how everything is encased? Okay, so what we're now going to do, just before you do that, Pops, it looks is... like just the chicken wrap you promised me for lunch. Mm. Right, a little bit of butter on there. Not for non-stick reasons, because this is a non-stick pan, but it just means that the bottom will go nice and golden with the butter, because that kind of helps it. Oh, no. It's all right, there we go. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go long ways. There. Voila. Right, Thomas, are you going to sprinkle the sesame seeds? Mm, okay. I know you love sesame seeds. Yeah, I really, really love them. <laughs> So we're just going to brush the top with the remaining butter and that just helps it go golden and crisp. Right, you're going to pop that away you and then can this. you just wipe that chopping board with this pop and bring it over. Okay, Tom? You open it. Yeah, sure. I don't like it. it there we go. So let's have a nice sprinkle on there. Emily, I'll have a nice close-up shot, I'm sure. There we go. Just for a bit of colour, really. Um, you could put any seeds you like on there, it doesn't matter. You could just put some mixed herbs, some dried mint, some cumin seeds, coriander, or you could brush a bit of oil with some curry spices and just brush that on too. That'll do some. Right, this is gonna go into the oven until it's golden and crisp. Okay, I will get this one out of the oven and we'll cut it open and have a look. Ah, oh, it is, look, super golden. Look at this. Wow, look at that, eh? Look good? Hey, up, Emily's moving, she must be hungry. Right, watch out. Well, couscous in a pie, pop. Emily. <laughs> Blowing her mind. No, not yet. So, let's just get underneath it. That looks hot. Yeah. Oh, do you want to get another fish slice, Thomas? Another slice like this, another spatula? You, yeah, you're going to lift it. This could be an absolute disaster or it could be brilliant. Right, you get under that side. Oh, no. Right, you both need to coordinate your lift. Go. I will get that out. Don't go down. Lay it down. Go. <gasps> that was high risk, high reward, that. Okay, <laughs> so let's, let's, shh, let's listen to the crisp. Oh, look at that. That sounded good, didn't it, Emily? You're monitoring the audio there. Oh, nice. Do you want to try a bit, Tom? Mm -hmm. A bit of pastry? There you go. Yeah. <gasps> Don't eat it all. Your mum's going to eat this. So there you go. If I cut into there, yeah. I'm gonna, we're going to serve this up with some lovely yoghurt and a little bit of salad and things like that. But you can see all the couscous is in there. It's melted. The fat is in there. Super easy to do. If nothing else, this is an amazing technique that you can make your own. Create your own family favourite. It doesn't have to be feta and peppers and things like that. It can be whatever flavour your family love. But if you want the recipe, go to masterclass.co and you will find it there. Yeah. Um, and please, if you do make it, send us some pictures. Emily's trying to attract my attention, I think. Have you got a question for me or not? No? All right, she, she was in the corner of my eye. Yeah, so the recipe is on masterclass.co. You'll get it there. On Friday, it is treat night tea. We're going to make homemade burgers. It's going to be delicious. It'll be Friday. We'll have done another week. We'll be a little bit closer to getting out, hopefully. But if, if not, we will see you on Friday on Facebook. Masterclass UK's Facebook page. I'll see you then.